is normal. Because most of them it's a bit like both. All right, everybody, we're getting ready to go live right here in just a moment here with Tenacious Business. Speak a bit like that as well. Business. We mix a lot of English, English, English and Dialogue. We'll get set up and make sure everybody has a to jump in. We've got a well, bunch so of folks here ready for you. It's a very interesting mix. Uh, so hi, I was, I was fact, so right wondering so I cameras, uh, but, uh, to, uh, to, to a Latino right. country. So I had oh, they're happy. I think Sinead's No, not yet, yet, but... Um, not so happy. I mean, dancing. I've been living in awesome. Germany for a good four Maybe years, so <laughs> so I did went to Switzerland. <laughs> All right, y'all. Italy, I have been there. Jump on here just a yeah. moment. Uh, but most of the time I spend in, in Germany. Uh, but now, um, I, th I think I didn't tell you that I'm moving back to Germany. By the way, so, yeah, oh, so I'm, yeah, so I'm winding up everything from here in Dubai, and my flight was scheduled on fourth of May, but uh, you know it got delayed now. So I don't know when, when every when the flights will be, uh, you know, they will be reopened and then we can travel. But I think maybe it's going to take another another month. I would say maybe by end of next month. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. end of May. Yeah, end of May. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> to see you guys. It's an opportunity to, to meet people rather than just staying online and, and you know, living in the virtual world. Yes. Yeah. People, it's, 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 uh, no, I know. And Everybody's listening to everybody right now. <laughs> we're live. We're live. All right, everybody. We're live right here this morning. And we just want to say hello and welcome to the show. We've got, uh, I'm figuring this thing out here. It's going to be pretty good. So in just a moment, I'm getting ready to jump on here with everybody as we jump on here to the, uh, to the show. I've got uh, three different people for you to watch this morning. We're going to go live here. Hopefully, they'll, they'll know that we're tuning in here in a second because they can't see me right now. So hang on, guys. We're getting ready to go live with the gang. Here we go. Let's see if I can make this happen. All right. I've got uh, three different people for you to watch this morning. We're gonna go live here. Hopefully, they'll they'll know that we're tuning in here in a second because they can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work this out, folks. All right, so here we go. Hang on, guys. We're getting ready to go live with the gang. Here we go. Let's Hopefully, you get a chance to tune in as we're getting set up here. We're gonna be going, uh, getting everything rocking here in just a couple of minutes. Hey, Shaday, baby, and so have but can y'all hear me out there? Success stories. So, for me, it's all about changing all lives. Right, and I really mics unmuted mine. right now. Welcome yeah, to Tenacious uh, Business. Hello, everybody. Really. Tell us about yourself, Um, so what we do is we do healthcare marketing and billing for a lot of nursing homes, rural hospitals. We don't really deal with small private practices. We deal with more like, if it's like a cardiology group with like 30 doctors, like specialty, um, we'll help them with marketing and billing. And like the way that it works, like a lot of them through development, obviously right, they need like both. Because once they're yeah. set up to accept insurance in America, uh, they can yeah. bill, right? And then once they are ready to bill, the number one thing they need are patients to bill for. So that's how like the billing right, and marketing so the go problem. together. We they help them <laughs> set up and then we bring the patients in for them. And then it just keeps optimizing because even if it's a set up practice, most of them are losing so much money because
All right, gang, I'm still working on getting everything set up right. I'm, I'm one short here on the room trying to get in here. Still working on getting everything set up right up. I'm one short here on the room. I mean, it's pretty easy if you think. If this whole All right, thing gang, like we're still, still years live ago, trying that, to get this it's, fixed. So like I got it's, it's, it's already where pretty hard. I'm not able to coordinate years ago, with like this. Yes, communication that's not good. I don't even know it's Zoom. It didn't work the way it was supposed to be here. Ago. <laughs> trying my best. Yeah, well, uh, so I was best in like a webinar yesterday and they asked me like the main difference between like let's say the other depression 10 Seems years they can't ago hear me. and today obviously that's like one of the main differences is like you could still stay connected with everybody at like a different level you know yeah yeah it's pretty easy to stay in touch which is great yeah um i'm on the live but i don't see anything like i just see the little flyer yeah i'm not just live now yeah I don't even get notification here. Oh, here he is. But we're not on there yet. He's there alone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Because on StreamYard, it will like split the screen in four. So like everyone's on at the same time. Like this is so different for me. <laughs> Stay with us, everybody. We're working on welcome. different links. Welcome to our live. We're so happy to be, be right here. with you. Can see. Uh, I'm trying to get in here. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, it's great. We're live, finally. We have a lot of things to say. Yeah. You guys you guys have already shared a lot of secrets backstage. I know. You know uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's been trying to get on. That's what Doug Thompson said. He's trying to get on. <laughs> I also use StreamYard. Hang on, gang. Uh, I'm trying to work my... on getting something. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's quite basic. And it yeah. has, you know, I have never took any training how to use StreamYard. And I, you know, I, I just signed up for it. Mm -hmm. And then everything was like pretty easy. And everything yeah. is just there. Clicks and then you, you get there. Yeah, same. The only thing I looked up was like how to add a little banner, but like it is basic. You know, it splits the screen in four. It's not fancy. Yes, like, they have heard a the lot of things I could deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're trying to go back. So you are in the same time zone, Chine? Like like Matt? Yeah, I think it's he's in North yeah. Carolina. So okay, nice. yeah. Well, we are live, but the person that's hosting it. We're having difficulties. Mm -hmm. So, Shine, mm -hmm. we're working at Gang, we're working at I'm Have you been to Singapore before up. since uh, no. the. Oh. No, but I do want to go to Thailand. I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Courtney actually really wants to go to Thailand, but uh, I've never been to Singapore. I have been to Nepal. I've been to India. All right, hopefully I'll get my message Tibet. in a second. Um, I have Send not been to Dubai either here. yet. Um, I've been to right, a lot so of South have, America. Shanae, guys, go to our private chat room sec on, uh, so on LinkedIn good. and go to that link I just sent you so we can I take I used to I used to go to Thailand as well. I can speak Thai as well, even. You could speak Thai? I can speak Thai, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I 
All right, trying to get them on here. Trying to get them on. Let's see what happens. All right, here they come. All right, gang. So I had an issue trying to get everybody in at one time, and it wasn't working. But I've got them coming to a different place, and you should see that in just a moment. All right, here we go. Getting ready to jump in with some folks. We got three in. Let's make sure they're here. Hello. Oh, looky here. All right, finally. All right, so the other stuff was crapping out, and everybody was watching and listening to all of our fun backstage talking. So. I know, all right? I know. I was talking about travel. I know, it was great. Oh, wow. All oh, right. Yeah. All right, so one more. Once Sohab gets in here, we'll get we'll get going. It just it botched up on the other way, couldn't make it work. So I went to a different plan of my own uh, my own private Zoom type of thing I have. So we'll do that differently this way. I got a program called Meet Zippy that does everything like Zoom, but more. And um, as soon as Sohab gets here, we'll jump into to the whole program. And we're running a little delay when we're on LinkedIn. Obviously, there's like a 10, 15 second delay. So I'm listening to you guys 10 seconds behind, trying to do everything else. Now everybody's yeah, watching us. Chatting. Everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> they're like saying, now they really know everything about us. It's really great. Hopefully, Sohan will jump in here in a second. Where's he at? It says there's four, so he should be here in a second. He, there he comes. There he comes. There he comes. I care about people seeing you guys more than me, so uh, I'm the little guy up in the corner here. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for the invite, man. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're here. I wasn't sure. I was gonna, oh, I was gonna show up. I just—I was, I was gonna like, set on a search party. It's been a—it's been a busy week, but I'm here. Tell me about it. I surely know. Uh, man, he's telling me. So he's telling me he's inside. So happy he's, he's inside. inside. Yeah, I don't see him. He's there. He's there. You see him? Well, he can see himself in the room apparently, but I, can't see him. <laughs> I don't see where he's at. <laughs> Let's see what this says here. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks for organizing, Matt. It's uh, all this technical stuff, you know. Yeah. You're the man. You're the man, really. I appreciate that. So I say, okay, I come again. I, come I think uh, for some reason his camera's not showing up. That's him right here. Oops, he just disappeared. We come back. We got to have him here. And I could do a bunch of people in this room, so it should be pretty simple. I'll move me over here and get out of the way. Oh, we got a little chat room over here, too, by the way, which is pretty cool for us. But All yeah. right. Let's wait for the for the man himself to show up here. That'd be horrible. Here he is. All right, now we got him. Hey. We're all on board, we finally. Are. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. It's only taken us 13 minutes and 42 seconds, but here we are. Oh my gosh, how, how crazy is this? All right, so thanks so much, everybody, for being here today. Obviously, we've got a lot of stuff planned, and uh, hopefully everybody is very patient for, uh, it looks like we've got a a ton of comments coming in already so everybody's enjoying hearing about Shanae's tours and trips and and uh <laughs> Fabian in Thailand and and so have with his awesome mustache and beard over there yeah looking pretty cool <laughs> mine. so mine. <laughs> I think that you know everybody we got to talk to about Fabian's his uh his starter kit going on here <laughs> he shaved it off this morning he shaved it off I was so disappointed <laughs> So if you all wouldn't mind, I'm going to go full screen here on this side. There we go. If you all wouldn't mind, if we can go from on my screen from left to right, starts with, with Shanae. If you can just do a quick introduction of yourself and what it is that you do so everybody can understand that, and then we'll, we'll jump into some things we're going to be talking about today. Okay, so my name is Shanae Murray. I'm the co-founder of MedSnake Media. We're a full-service growth agency for helping the company. And what we do is we do healthcare marketing, billing, and management for you know long-term care facilities, hospitals, so on and so forth. Awesome. <laughs> so on and so forth. <laughs> Next guy, the young looking man in the middle. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'm Fabian, uh, based in Singapore, a Frenchie based in Singapore. I'm, I founded Excellence Resumes for years ago. We, 
We had job seekers, mostly mid to top level executives. Who is their personal branding? We work on their LinkedIn profile, on their resume, on the job hunting strategy. We had them run the interview, negotiate their salary. Uh, so yeah, we've had uh, more than 4,000 people over the past four years and a lot more to come. So pretty excited to be here to help you guys. Thanks, Matt, for giving me the opportunity. Thanks, Shine, for being here. For being here. And so I am just so delighted to be with you guys. So fun. Really. Thank you so much, Fabian. <laughs> And last but not least, right. anyway, guys, this is this is this is Suhaib. I I hope you can hear me. Can yeah. you can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. We hear you just fine. All right. So so I'm I'm based based out in Dubai. I live here for for good almost five years now, and my background is in the HR, and I do a lot of work for the job seekers and and especially for you know um, com companies who are uh, you know struggling to get their brand out, especially on LinkedIn, and I just try to help them. And just just a bit of me, I think that's enough. And and we'll explain once we get started with today's live show. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Well, we're pretty stoked about the opportunity to share some information with folks in the midst of. Uh, well, I mean, obviously everybody's talking about it, and we're all probably tired of hearing it. But it's it's very detrimental to a lot of people, and coronavirus is very serious. Uh, so we don't mean to make light of anything like that. Uh, I mean, just in New York alone, in the United States, over the past few months. Uh, it's been almost 15,000 people that have died, dead, not not diseased, but dead, uh, just in one state in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. So Lord knows that across the world there have been, you know, I think there's like 100, 200,000 deaths so far. I think the number was last time I saw it. It's a high number. So it's very, yeah. very detrimental. And, um, you know, we, we mean in no way to bring any disrespect to anybody that's dealing with family members that have been lost or, or anything of that nature. We, we send our regards and definitely our prayers to your families. Um, however, in the midst of a situation like this, there is a, a, a there is an air of of urgency. There's an air of of uncertainty. Uh, there's a bit of of fear and doubt, concern, worry, uh, unrest. Uh, who knows what kind of thing going on, right? And then there's also a an opportunity for people that are and have been uh, working uh, from home for a long time with businesses that don't necessarily you know, deal with some of these things that we're facing right now um, because our, our lives, our work still goes on. Now, is it a little more di difficult for a guy like, like me and us here that, that do some things like if we wanted to go travel, speak internationally or go to a different place to speak, can't do that right now. Um, you know, are a lot of people just lining up at the door to sign up for coaching programs and do all that kind of stuff right now? Not really. I mean, a lot of people could say they probably are, but probably not because people aren't spending a lot of money right now because they're, they're concerned to spend their money. They don't know what's getting ready to happen, so they're holding on to money. There's a lot of things going on in the, in the workplace right now in the world. And for those of you that are out there that are looking for jobs or are un, have unrest with the job that you currently have, and you've had plenty of time to think about it the past couple of months, past few months, uh, there may be an opportunity for you to make a change. Now, fear may stop you from doing that because you might be afraid, well, if I, if I leave this job, I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, what are you going to do now? I mean, you've got a great opportunity. So the reason we want to pull this show together today and the reason why we have the folks here is I believe there's great hope and there is great opportunity for people right now to either increase what you already have, not necessarily leave your job, but to really increase who you are and mm -hmm. to, really, to really prepare yourself to be even better for when things there won't be a new, it's not going to go back to normal. There's no back to normal. But whenever things come to whatever it is and we're moving forward, you can be better for it. Or this is your chance to say, man, this is my chance to move. I can finally do it. And, and we're going to show you how. There's some things that we can do for that for you to help you here on LinkedIn, help your, your personal life, your business life, and show you some opportunities that are out there available that you may not have known of or thought that were possible. So we've got a lot of that to talk about today, and I appreciate all three of you here that are champions for those causes and those thought processes. Um, I know Soheb and, uh, and Fabian has some things laid up for uh, uh, slides that we have here, and Shanae, I didn't really get a chance to work out with that with you. However, yeah. um, is there is there and are there, I, I was ladies first, so I'm gonna go to you first. Oh, so, yeah. okay. uh, so in that in that manner, you know, what are some things that are really heavy on your heart right now? Some things that you can think you could share for people that are dealing with tenacity in their lives or to get tenacious, folks that are dealing with some of the things I just talked about. You know, what are some things you've been feeling, experiencing? I, I watch a lot of things you say and do, but, you know, what are some of the things you can share with people today that you think could provide that help and hope right now? 
I would say that now more than ever, it's really time to invest in building your personal brand or, or, you know, whoever you are on a platform like LinkedIn, independent of your employer or whatever future employers you have, because you have to start thinking about things that nobody could potentially take away from you, given furloughs or being laid off or firing. And your network is definitely one of those things. Um, your presence, what you give back to the community is definitely one of those things. So I think that whatever time that you have, let's say one or two hours a day, it's definitely time to start investing in yourself through building a network online and creating content and just getting out there because it's a way that you'll be able to, number one, meet more people and differentiate yourself if you are looking for a job. Yeah, no doubt. So what are some of the people that you've been running across, let's say from folks you've been dealing with in your up till Corona, you know, you've got, you've got clients and you've got coaching clients mm-hmm. and you've got people that you talk to when you do events and clinics that workshops, things of that nature. And then, and then people now. So uh, they, you- they're realizing now more than ever that they should have invested in their online presence a year ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Consistent with it and they should have, um, done everything that they could to create content, repurpose content, be consistent because now they're panicking. So a lot of the people that relied on like grassroots marketing and going to networking events and relied less online are like, how am I supposed to reach my target audience? How, how are we supposed to convey our message to our patients? And, um, you know, obviously they're, they're flocking to people like us that can help them do that and that have the experience. So, the world, like Matt says, is never going to go back, in my opinion, to what it was, let's say, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago. It's going. People are more comfortable online now more than ever. There's many companies that are now thinking about, wow, we don't have to pay the overhead for a high-rise building in the city. Let's, you know, have half of our employees remain working remotely. Let's um, cut these costs, cut, cut all of this overhead. So the remote lifestyle is going to catch on fire. So you have to really think, how can you produce an income from your household? If you don't have a job, I would be thinking, how could I produce an income from my laptop? Because that's going to be like basically uh, the way of the future. Well, you're, my opinion. I agree hundred percent. And one of the things that I, I love about you and why I really wanted you on the show is because your background in healthcare and your passion for healthcare Obviously, you know, you've been through, you're a cancer survivor, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with cancer as well. So it's, mm-hmm. it's a passion in your life. And my wife is, is in healthcare. She's an executive at a hospital. And she's recently had to, to let go uh, a lot of people at the hospital. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not the only hospital that's like that. A lot of smaller hospitals and rural hospitals um, mm-hmm. that, and the bottom line is hospitals count on sick people to make money. So. And when everybody's staying at home, you know, they're, they're not getting injured. They're not, they're not, you know, I mean, I hate to say it that way, but it's the truth. So when those things change, hospitals change, and then you have to deal with, with costs, you know? So, you know, in that realm, you know, what kind of things have you been, or have you been seeing anything in the healthcare? I mean, it sounds like it just shocked you. So, I mean, what, what have you seen so far in the healthcare world that has made a difference in what's happening here for uh, a yeah. co- career sake, you know? So actually now more than ever, like based on the statistics, there's more attention on hospitals and like their reputation has actually exceeded that of like physicians and nurses and everything independently. So the spotlight is on the hospitals and obviously a lot of them, especially those that we're contracted with, are using this as an opportunity to leverage their brand, to um, show that they're giving back to the community, but obviously their concern, I was on a webinar with one of our clients yesterday, is how do we bring back, you know, elective surgical, you know, patients? How do we bring back patients back to the facility that have nothing to do with COVID-19 once this passes? You know, how do we let them know that we're still here, that it's a clean facility, that we, you know, things are going to run back to normal. So that's a That's like a whole transition that's going to be coming up in the next eight weeks that hospitals are going to have to tackle. But for the hospitals and healthcare facilities that really leverage this time, like even if you're closed, you should be out, you know, um, donating to hospitals, whether you're even if you're a cookie shop, you know, it's just a time where you could be in the spotlight if you use it right. Obviously, private practice physicians are nervous. Yeah. 
they've had to, a lot of them have had to shut down on their doors. And the bottom line is a lot of small businesses can't survive being closed for eight weeks. So, I mean, in America, it's going to work where the hospitals are getting more attention. They're buying on more small practices. And that's just the way of the future. How does a huge healthcare system connect with patients like a small mom and pop? No, totally. You know? I agree with you. I mean, I see that a lot too. My wife deals with that with a lot of small practices that are getting you know, absorbed by hospitals in the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now when there's no patient load, I used to run a retail brick and mortar, a couple of retail stores in the past. And uh, I'm thankful that I don't right now because I don't know how I would be in business. I would have lost my shirt right now. I mean, I've had mm -hmm. a few, several hundred thousand dollars worth of stock and nobody coming in to buy it. And you still have rent, taxes, employees, all this kind of stuff to deal with. What are you going to do? <laughs> mm -hmm. And none of that stuff, I mean, I see some relief in the government on the news. I'm not like an yeah. expert when it comes to all of that. But just from what I've seen, none of, I mean, bills continue. So that's what people, I, I want people to not be naive. And if they get relief from the government, that that's great. But not to necessarily depend on that for building their future. You know, they've got to be innovative, be resourceful, audit their skill sets, right? Yeah. What can they do from where they are with what they have? And um, how can they leverage what they're good at to produce an income? I agree. I'd like to keep some of that thoughts for later because I want to talk about folks that may want to transition from, from what you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. of some of the fear, maybe they've decided they want to take some of their skills, talents, and abilities that they've been using in healthcare and didn't think that it was applicable anywhere else. But there, mm -hmm. may, there may be options for them to do something different. And mm -hmm. I know that so have and, uh, and, uh, and we have some stuff here is going to come up with as well. And um, I think I'm going to shift to, to Sohab right now if I can. And yeah. I'll pull up his uh, his slides in a second. I'll, you let me know when you want me to pull those up for you. And I'll pull those sure, up. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Let me pull this up. I mean, also, you know, what, what Shanae just said about uh, first person running, I think this is actually the right moment that, that everybody, they must be realizing, you know, wish we had started a year ago, you know, two years ago, because right now when it comes to, uh, you know, in a situation when, where people, they have lost jobs, so the only way to stand back in your career game is through your network, is through the recruiters, is through the people that you know. And if you haven't worked, so now you might be realizing, but still, I mean, I have got tons and tons of tips today that, that I would love to share with you and, you know, different uh, resources that, that might help you get you back in the career game. And But still, like, I would say like like about 70 to 80 percent in those tricks, in those um, advices, networking is going to be there. Personal branding is going to be there, and LinkedIn and Facebook uh, are going to cover the major chunk of it. So now we are moving actually in the digital space, and you know we have to undress our shyness. We have to connect with the people. We have to take this thing very seriously. That if you would not even realize, like like in this moment of time, I think um, it will be far too late for you to step in the digital space and create your own value, create your own presence, because everybody right now is competing you know, uh, to get that lead, be the, you know, uh, expert in, in whatever their subject they are in the social media and the presence. So still you have time. So I'm going to give away some really uh, nice tips in today's live session. Uh, Matt, can you pull up those slides, please? Yep. I'm going to have to transition to a different different way here than just having you guys on the same screen. All right, but sure. They'll hear you at the same time. You'll hear the same thing. Yeah. It's so, you know, it's a great session, Matt, uh, that you have organized, you know, bringing people together and especially in this moment of time and millions of people, they, you know, they have lost the jobs and, but uh, you should not be worried about it because there are still jobs are available. It's just that, you know, we are, we are in a dark state of our minds that we think like everything um, um, is broken. Uh, what's going to happen with our career, but, but hopefully, you know, uh, by the grace of Almighty after today's session, you'll be in a position to do some work for yourself to, to help yourself back in the career game. So I have some really, really nice tips for you guys. Uh, did you get the slides, Matt? Yeah, I've got a slide up that they're seeing, they're not oh, seeing right. you, and we're on which, so, which so, sectors are you know more what, there, There's one, especially for the viewers who are watching us from the United States, there, I read one article in the morning, and that was from Donald Trump, and he said like he is suspending the US immigration because he wanted to focus uh, on the American jobs. So especially Americans who have lost their jobs. So I think this is a great opportunity for you that there would not be any international experts or, you know, there would not be that high com competition. So according to that article, um, you know, it says that um, U.S. is going to suspend the immigration campaign. I don't know for how long, but, but this was in the article. So maybe you can Google and you can read more about it. So I think this is a good news for the Americans that, you know, 
that you might have less competition as compared to uh, you know the times when the market or the US market they are inviting people from all over the world. Yeah. And in those slides which Matt will uh, you know shortly put up, you're going to see different sectors which are hiring, and I can name those sectors, especially the healthcare, the IT, logistics, and supply chain. Um, there are two more. One is e-commerce plus also the education sector. So these are the sectors which are very, very high in demand. So maybe if you fall in that profession or your skill fall in that profession, I think you are still in a good position to get yourself back in the career game. But again, as I mentioned that I have some really, really nice tips, some good work for you guys to do that will help you get yourself back in the career game. But you're going to do the work for the networking. You're going to do the work for your presence on the social media and you're going to connect with the people. But those tips will definitely help you. And in most slides, you're going to see there are companies in the United States, uh, you know, they are still hiring. And two big companies, Salesforce, Amazon, and they are like, you know, I read one article, they were like 15 and 20 companies they were hiring. And I extracted that information, put in one slide for all of you. So you're going to see the companies, the sector which is hiring, the sectors which are hiring, and then the roles available. And in roles, you would see, you know, the roles are not only for the nurses, but of course there is a, you know, um, there, there is a spike, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, hiring for the nurses. But you're going to see there are other roles as well within different sectors who are hiring. So you're going to see in education sector, there are jobs available for tutors. So, you know, because education sector is, is affected as well. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the universities, the colleges, they are, you know, looking for tutors who can do the online or distance learning. So there are jobs available. But also you're going to see, uh, like, even in the healthcare sector, for example, uh, you know, making different kind of healthcare apps, maybe making different kind of, uh, you know, those those awareness apps, you know, to help people. So that's where we need the engineers. That's where we need the IT people. That's where we need the web developers. So I think you are already in a good place. So you should not be worried about it. It's just that we have to source the information in a right way and we have to keep the positive mindset. Because if you would think, you know, everything is gone, there are no job opportunities, I'm going to do, you know, what will happen in the future and even if you are thinking right now you know uh, maybe for the next three months i would not have any job and what recruiters gonna think so don't worry about that because recruiters and all over the globe people know that all oh, companies globally they are affected they have been badly affected they are intended to lose their employees uh, companies had laid off their employees so they are aware of the fact so so don't worry this is i think also a time as Shanae mentioned this is a time for you to reflect you know maybe a good time for you to spend with yourself your laptop your one idea, a cup of coffee, 2 a.m. the night, and you're working on something, this is something I think you wouldn't, you would ever wish to have. So I think you can really optimize your time. Uh, do you have the slides, Matt? Yeah, I had the, first, I had the first one up. We're only gonna be able to see the slides, not you at the same time right now. So I had the first slide up and I'm ready to go to the second slide if you'd like. That's with the 15 points you had laid out. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Fifteen, yeah. So, fifteen top jobs. Yeah. So, fifteen top jobs. So, there is like a you know I can see in front of me as well. Anyway, um, I can speak further. Thank so, you. there is a um, you know the jobs are available for warehouse handlers. There are jobs for the drivers, um, healthcare people. You know, in the healthcare industry, we have you know jobs in the United States for st statisticians. There are like tutor in the mathematicians, calculus, GMAT tutors, MCAT tutors. Uh, delivery drivers, for example, uh, you know, merchandise associate, we have um, medical transporter roles, so a bunch of jobs are available. And also we have, um, if, you, if you have any certification in the medical, so they are, they are also asking for certified medical assistant roles are available. And also there is a job for available for, um, you know, people who, who work in the, you know, emergency section or like emergencies, like, like ambulances, Mm -hmm. drivers uh, you know so i think there are a bunch of jobs that are available it's just that we have to source them now and if i can you know share with you guys if you are having your job right now if you're not uh you know laid off i think this is a moment of time where you have to show your loyalty with your current employer because your employer might have laid off you know uh, dozens of other employees but you are still employed so you have to be very proactive you reach out to your manager you know every second day or maybe, you know, this is a moment of time where you can, uh, you know, uh, show your 200% at the job. Although you're working at home, there's no boss, there's no teammates, you know, you feel like, you know, you can wake up at any 
um, at any time in the morning, but then, you know, wake up 8 a.m. in the morning, 9 a.m., shoot an email with a new business idea, new prospect. If you're in the business development, share new ideas, how we can reach out to more clients, how we can, you know, do something uh, productive. So it's just that how you are reaching out even to your current employer to, to create that bond, to solidify that bond. And in case, for example, you know, if you are laid off still, I mean, you know, there is there is nothing to worry, there is nothing to worry about. What you can do is that, you know, just think uh, that what if you give it back to your employer? So although they have, you know, laid you off, but you reach out to them back again, you say like, like okay, you know, you have uh, you have laid off, laid off a lot of employees, but I still would like to render my services. I still would like to, I know, that you would definitely need me because I've been working on this system for the past three to four years, or maybe I'm in this department for the last five years and I know the inside out. I was handling the clients, so so also okay if you're not giving me the salary, but I still would like to help you guys. I still would like to help my company because I because you have been my bread and butter for the past many years. This will stay you in contact with the employer. This this will create that bond with them. So at any given point of time, because we don't know, maybe after a month, after a few weeks, you know, they might say, okay, John, you know what? We need you back in the company. Thank you very much for your loyalty. You have been an honest worker. You know, this is a point where you can make a difference. So go back to your current employer who has laid you off. Or if they say no, no problem. You can go back to your previous employers. It's the time where you can, you know, um, uh, create that bond again with your previous employers. So I think this is something that uh, I, I think everybody should do who has been laid off. And especially if you are on the job right now, don't do an emotional decision that, you know, uh, my company has done 10% or 50% salary reduction. Think positive. Think in a way that, you know, globally the business are affected as well. So even if you're getting 50% of it, you're going to give your 500% right now to create your space, to create your, you know, be the weakness for your employer that they should not afford to lose you. And I have some bunch of tips and I think uh, um, as we move on further into this live session, I'll be happy to share them as well, that how you can find the jobs, how you can put yourself best in the career game. And I'm super excited to share those tips. And you'll be amazed, by the way. <laughs> you, I already am. Like, good Lord, have mercy. <laughs> no, that's really... And, and can I just add, like, you could do the same thing if you're an entrepreneur. So a lot of, let's say, video companies have said, hey, all my clients, like, they put me on hold or they canceled. And I told them, well, try to give them consulting, try to help them. Even if they can't pay you right now, let's say in four weeks when they're back on, you're going to be the first person that they think of, you know, because you were there for them during the difficult time. So the same can be applied for like more entrepreneurial people as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, right. so Hab, you had a, you were into that first slide and I noticed that there were several different points you had on that slide as well. It's amazing. Um, but I want to get back to that in a second. There are yeah. a couple of questions that popped in and, and uh, Shanae, I think one of the questions was really good is that uh, Christian mm -hmm. Chapman asked you a question a, a bit back here, which is health related. Uh, okay. If you may have an answer to that question, he says, I um, uh, would love to hear some, some billing CPT with modifiers for telehealth to help that billing number. Do you, do you know what that is? Yeah. We actually, yeah, yeah. So those are codes that will optimize what you get reimbursed, you know, with the insurances that you're credentialed with. <laughs> for telehealth and Courtney Herring, who's my co-founder, actually, we created a resource for our clients. So if you just message me, we'll send that resource to you. So it's like a list of the CPT codes. Oh, I know he'll dig that because um, he's a friend yeah. of mine and he, he really thinks the, the telehealth is a good, well, I mean, a lot well, of things are going that, they're going that way. Yeah, they've also changed the rules a bit. So let's say your mental health counselor or you do, you know, a lot of the rules now are like, you don't, it's like the licensing for the states have changed. So you could practice outside of the state that you're licensed with now for telehealth for now. I know that that has, you know, that may have, that may be temporary, but yeah. for now you could, because of the demand, you know what I mean? Um, but if you're a mental health counselor or anything, physician, it's time to implement telehealth, even for long-term care, nursing, homes, assisted livings, it's time to implement telehealth. There's a lot going on in that industry, that's for sure, which means there's opportunities, especially for folks that think they're getting laid off. There may be, you could say, I want to transition to another department in the hospital and I want to apply for this job that I can do X, Y, Z instead of not having a job at all. Absolutely. And I actually read that for the series one funding for, for the startups, you know, this round or whatever, digital health got more funding than any other sector. 
and it was like 1.5 times higher than the previous highest funding round. Wow. So, yeah. So digital health is like, like, so, so how I was saying, so it's like, you need to just understand there's jobs out there, but you need to put yourself in a position for the jobs that are available. Right. Right. Like you said. Yeah. It makes a big difference instead of just, you know, being a posture of fear or not knowing if you're going to have your job or anything like that, which a lot of people are feeling, but you have to be proactive is one of the things we're really positive about on this show is that to be more proactive than reactive because reactive is going to get you fired or reactive is going to get you nothing. Proactive is completely different. Networking, job searching, people have to understand it's a verb. Like you can't just send a resume and kind of wait for weeks. Like it's not like that anymore. So yeah, listen, the game, the game real. has changed. The game has changed. So yeah, you want to continue. Thank you for that. Yeah. Shanae. You want to continue on with some of your slides and we're at the slide where you're 15 points. And uh, I know you've got some points on the side to, I can click on those or go to the next slide. What would you like me to do? What Sohab is saying is that the message is uh, for everyone is this situation is uh, is really an opportunity to stand out. Basically. It's, it's not about oh, yeah. saying, oh, I, I can't do anything. I just, it's, there's nothing to do now. You have to stand out now. That's really, like, it's, it's right now. You know, uh, don't wait any longer. Just do your work and, and stand out from the noise because... Uh, yeah, that's your chance, you know, just take it, really. No, you're absolutely right, Fabian. This is the most important time to do it. And a lot of times folks that are thinking shoulda, coulda, woulda are going to be left behind. This is the most important time to act. This is when it's time to do it. If you're thinking, yeah. should I, the answer is yes. <laughs> it's not like, do it. No, it's yes, go now. This is This is it. Now, maybe you don't know how. That's okay. I mean, there's people out here, that's what we're here for. A little bit today help share with it, some of that with you there's plenty of people on this platform yeah. on linkedin that can help you out with that fabian's get ready to talk about that shortly and so have has several things oh, yeah. to point out here in a minute in a minute as to how you can even position yourself to go to some of those areas right so have oh we lost your audio yeah we can hear you so i'm can you hear me now yes yes yeah. All right. So I think um, how you can now let's talk about how you can source the opportunities. All right. And one big platform is Facebook. And I was surprised if you could just go on Facebook and look for you know, those groups on Facebook, work from home, remote work. And you'll be surprised that there are tons and tons of jobs. People are posting there. those small, small temporary jobs. I think this is a great strategy for you to go to Facebook and even on LinkedIn, you can find different groups. People have made WhatsApp groups. People have made groups on Telegram, uh, work from home, virtual work, remote work, freelancing. So I think you should take the opportunity right now to, you definitely would have your Facebook accounts. It's the time that you should uh, look for those groups which have massive amount of you know members in, the, in that community. And then you can, you know, now Facebook gives you the opportunity that you can filter the groups for the regions as well. So you can narrow down your search and join those groups. And here's what you're gonna do next. Since you are unemployed right now, you don't have a job. What you're going to do is also you can, you know, reach out to the members within that group, but you're going to reach out to the admin and you have to ask the admin, hey, look, this is what has happened with me. And I'm going to make this post in your group. Could you please help me for just one day if you can pin my post on the top? You know, that will give you the maximum traction. That will give you the maximum visibility within that group. So because, you know, um, you, you can leave your contact details if you wish to. It's not up to you how you're going to draft that message. But I think the Facebook groups is an opportunity for you to, you know, uh, dive in and, you know, and, and, and put yourself out there. Ask people, uh, you know, within that work from home, virtual groups, remote work groups, and just crack the opportunities from there. And then also on LinkedIn groups, if you are a member in a LinkedIn group, maybe you can reach out to the admin again of that group. Now, again, it depends if you're reaching out to um, any admin just, you know, immediately. But I would suggest, you know, start to uh, get Engage. along with the, with the admin, first connect with the person and then you know, have a comfort level and then ask him if he can recommend your post. Because um, I run the biggest group on LinkedIn for jobs in Germany. And, you know, uh, every week, you know, I recommend one post. Um, sometimes to my own post and sometimes someone else's post. But then, you know, all of a sudden, like like immediately 40,000 people, they get to notify that there is this post, okay? So you can take leverage of these two uh, platforms, LinkedIn and Facebook, and join groups. I mentioned again, virtual groups, uh, remote work group, 
um, work from home and freelancing groups. So I think there, there, there's a huge opportunity available. For example, also, you know, if you are, let's say, um, you have a great skill in, a, in Adobe Photoshop. So there are groups, you know, animations, text animation, motion graphics. So, so there are some small, small groups that are available where you can just dive in and you can also start to showcase your work. And I think I'll go back again to what Shine said in the beginning, that this is the right time for you to brand yourself. If you're coming from a public public speaking background, I think LinkedIn is a great platform. You know, it gives you the opportunity that you can upload your video. So you can, you know, uh, you can tell the world your speaking power. If you are coming from a background of a graphic designer, upload your logos. You know, you, you don't want to come in in a video, upload your work, showcase your work. You can also use your LinkedIn backdrop. You know, uh, if, for example, people, they are coming to your profile, I think Fabian would explain this more in detail, so I'll leave it to Fabian for now. And what else I can talk here is that, okay, let me share one more point because I have a lot of points, but I want to uh, give Fabian a chance as well. Uh, for example, if you're looking out for a job, don't look for full-time opportunities all the time right now. You can look for temporary work, look for project work, look for remote work, look for virtual work, look for freelance work. I think these keywords will definitely give you the chance to source the opportunities. Maybe companies, because as I mentioned, they are badly affected globally. They don't have, for example, that salary structure to, to pay. They used to pay you X, Y, Z, but now they, they can only pay, for example, X, Y amount. So you might have to narrow down your search and look for freelance, temporary roles, contractual, maybe part-time, short-term employment. So I think you might get to see a lot of roles uh, available, which otherwise is remain unnoticed. And because you're looking only for full-time, 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 and there are no full-time roles available. So try to shift towards temporary, contractual, part-time, freelance, remote work. And you might be amazed to see, you know, there are opportunities available um, on these uh, so social media platforms. I leave it here for now. And um, and I'll continue further on my next turn. So good. So good. <laughs> we got plenty to talk about, that's for sure. So many good things. And boy, by the way, Fabian, if that wasn't a good segue for you, I mean, Shanae set you up, Sabian set you up for everything that you're about to talk about, which is so good when it comes down to personal branding. Um, and of course, you know, really with your expertise as far as resumes and you know, you've got a little business on the side about resumes, right? So <laughs> make a couple of things over there. But yeah, go ahead. You see, it's uh, what, what Shane and, and Sohal just said, you know, uh, getting your personal brand on point and invest in your brand because I really love the sentence that what you said, Shane. You really said that your personal branding is an investment and it's true because once you invest in your brand and you, you manage to get it clear, you know, nobody can take it away from you, you know, and, unless you're really screwed up in the future, which is impossible. Uh, so it's something you're building for you and uh, something I can give you results. So for me, after four years helping mostly job seekers, you know, work on their personal branding because they have those, those goals, they, their dream job they want, they want to get and, and it seems too far and too hard and they come to me because they realize that they need external help. Uh, I realize, in fact, most people, uh, they struggle to first of all understand what they want. So in this period of time, which is critical for, I mean, what's going to happen in the next four weeks, one, two, three uh, months, we don't know. You need to know exactly where you see yourself because it's true that there are less jobs available now, but you also need to take some time to think about what, did, what do I really like to do? What's my, what, am I, what am I passionate about? Uh, yes, the world is going to change. The, the, all the jobs available, I mean, they won't be the same, but think about yourself as well because maybe the job you had until today wasn't really your dream job. Right. So you need to do some work about really your why you're proposing life, you know, and how you want to impact other, I mean, other lives around you, you know, because this job you had maybe was not the right one for you as well. So today I'm going to give you some tips about, uh, very practical tips, really, about how to get your brand on point, especially on LinkedIn. And I'm going to give you some very actionable tips as well to work on your resume because those two things... They are critical when you're looking for a job. Yes, your network matters, your skills to rock your job interview matter, matter as well. But your resume and your LinkedIn profile is what's going to get you a door. I mean, it's going to get you, it's going to you the interview. That's the purpose of this, you know. So um, my question for you today, if you're lis listening at TV right now, I just want to know, are you really on LinkedIn? 
when I ask this question, people realize is that, okay, you have an Indian account, you're here listening to us, you have an Indian account, that's a good point. But does that mean that you have on, you are on LinkedIn, are you actively engaging? Are you really putting a fault about on, on, you know, on how other people see you? You know, that's very important. You know, being on LinkedIn is not having a LinkedIn account and, and logging in once a day. No, you have to engage in it. You need to add value, you know. You need to uh, try to impact lives. That's very important and work on your brand. So I'm going to give you some very simple tips that will help you boost your LinkedIn profile. I will obviously not, not go into details. It's just impossible today. But I, what I'm asking you now, if you have any frustration regarding your LinkedIn profile, your engagement, your resume, just write it in the comments below, you know, write them, write your frustrations below. I will not judge you. I will handle them like right now live and do my best to give you a, a, a reply that's going to help you. So the first thing on LinkedIn that I see is the profile picture. We all see that first. Uh, and when someone visits your profile, is your profile picture. Look at Matt's profile picture, Shanae, Sohab, mine. Uh, you know, it's we, if we have it so professional, it's not for any reason. It's because on LinkedIn, you need to look professional. <laughs> so <laughs> don't, <laughs> chance, <laughs> you know, don't, give a, don't give a chance to people to judge you as someone who's not professional just because you took your picture in your bathroom, please. You understand? It's very important. So, uh, you know, I have some stuff. Uh, but, you know, to me, to be honest, I find, this, I find this a bit ridiculous because people should not be judged on their look, but on their achievements, what they can, what they can bring in, you know. Yeah. But we can't avoid it. It's a, it's, a, it's a social network, you know. So the way we look impacts the way people see us. That's how it is. Sure. So you see in front of you right now, there are just three pictures. Some of them, they look okay, especially the one on the right. Um, however, you can clearly see that the, the quality and the lighting is not optimum. So remember, your profile picture is so important that every time you will comment on, on Chene's, um post that she has almost 200,000 followers, there's potentially 200,000 people who are going to see your picture. Uh, so it's almost half a million, <laughs> you know? So if you put a comment there, you want your picture to play in, in, in into your, your your favor, you know. So uh, just after that, you can if you can click, man, that'd be great. Um, you have a few samples of, of profile pictures that are actually, you know, uh, you can see they are high quality, they've been taken in studio. Uh, I think there's still like 20 seconds between the time between the time that we press see on the picture. Yeah, they are, they are showing up now. Yeah, they're all there. So you can see now the pictures. Um, uh, that you see in front of you now, they just makes they just make so much more sense, you know. Sure. Um, you need to look professional, and if you're asking, wondering if you should go in a studio to get to get a very nice headshot, just go for it. I mean, right now it's a bit complicated. We agree, uh, but uh, uh, or if you have a friend who has a like a professional camera, just go for it. It's, it's very important. So that's a very basic tip, but it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. Oh, uh, and. Uh, well, just so people understand how important it is, I don't feel like people took me or Courtney seriously on LinkedIn when we got that, that photo shoot. And it really changed the game. Like, we got, I mean, it paid for itself within two weeks. Because of the exactly. rating. You know what I mean? It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, uh, it's so important. One and, quick uh, tip, too, from home yeah. right now. I do photography and video work and whatnot a little bit, you know, a little bit. So um, one really good oh, thing about so, uh, I, uh, so <laughs> iPhones, if you have an iPhone, not, not being an Android hater, but for sure on iPhones, uh, you can go to your photo settings when you take a shot. Um, and typically when you do it horizontally, which is the best way to take a shot. Um, but on the, on the iPhone settings, you can choose on photos and they've got a studio setting on an iPhone. And when you go to the studio setting, it's got about five or six different options. Some of them are a little goofy and not what you want at all. But like the second one and the third one are set with studio lighting, which does a little bit of fading to the background. And it does a little bit of softening around the, the position that it finds, the, the body, the human, your head, and your oh, shoulders yeah. and arms. Right? And gives you more of a professional shot. So it's easy at home. On top of that, you can set your timer. So you can set it for 10 seconds or 3 seconds. You can set your phone where it's at to make sure you get uh, – 
enough of your head and your shoulders and your your, your upper torso, and you can take a shot like that and have a, a professional-looking photo that is high resolution and something you could use while you're at home right now, not to talk down to any photographers that would want to have the money by getting somebody in their studio, but you can't go to the studio right now. So in that case, you can make these additions at your home and do exactly what Fabian's talking about for free. For sure, for sure. I agree with you, Matt, there's always yeah. options, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And your LinkedIn profile, it increases your visibility by 14%. So what Fabian has mentioned is absolutely you know, true. So yeah. if you have a good looking profile picture, you will drive traffic to your, and similarly, for example, now if you're going in your LinkedIn groups and your Facebook groups, and you're asking people for any kind of help, the first thing that will stand out is your picture, not even your name. Yeah. Your picture exactly. is- I like when people smile on their picture. Oh yeah. Yeah, they yeah, got those, yeah. everybody's got those bean looks like, <laughs> nobody wants to see that. I mean, I'm gonna <laughs> hire somebody to see Sinead, I don't wanna see that. I wanna see a smile, that's for sure, right? And then people's, their headlines are, I'm, not, I'm sure Fabian's going to talk about that, people's headlines like, I am the man, I am the coach of the world, you hire me, I am you, you want. It's like, I am immediately not going to look for you because you're full of yourself. But, you know, headlines need to be something yeah. that's, that's serve in a serving attitude. I'm sure you're going to talk about Fabian, but it should be, should be forward towards people, you know, not about you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so regarding the photograph, it's just it's really a big deal. So please pay attention to it. If you really can't afford a, photo, uh, a professional headshot in a the studio, then you find a plan B. But make sure you get it you get it right. It's yeah. so important. And then so have you mentioned something just just earlier about about the background picture, and it's funny because it's something I have on my slides as well. And your background picture, it's your banner. Like it's yours, nobody can take it from you. You can write whatever you want there, and it's fine. You can put your phone number, you can put your areas of expertise, so true. You can yeah, put yeah. how you stand up, what do you want to achieve, what job you want to apply, whatever you want, it is your banner. So there is a website that most people know, but most people underuse, and it's called canva.com. And you have there, you have there some some banners uh, that you can just choose, they are already cropped to be the right size on LinkedIn. And you can just add whatever you want to stand out. Remember, it's all, all about standing out from the crowd. So it's called canva.com. I can maybe, uh, or Matt, or so have you can maybe write in comments so people can just go and get it. And you get your LinkedIn background picture there, the banner. And, you know, something I like to do is for our clients to, you know, to write their, their favorite quote, or you can write your, 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 your areas of expertise, you know, your top achievements. If you have a, uh, uh, still our recommendations from from an ex colleague. Put it there on your banner. You know, just just shine. It's here for you to shine. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, a few examples that you can see now that Matt is, is putting on the on the slides. Uh, examples in red of uh, wrong banners and uh, and uh, and right banners uh, right after that. So so hi, I can see you change yours not not too long ago, for example. Yeah, you know what? I I changed it because I changed my I changed my style. I have a big beard now, and I'm I'm actually making my mustache now. And, uh, <laughs> you have? Would you like to say that again one more time? You have what? So I'm uh, I changed my style. You have a big beard, and, you said. You know, in the long term, now I can go outside. I can trim my beard <laughs> from from any, like 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 a hair hairdresser, and it's growing and growing for the past two months. And I was like, all right, it's okay. So it's a time for me to you know change my picture because. Even if I would go outside, you know, uh, I want to be recognized. But if I would land at an interview or I'm meeting, you know, some somebody over a Zoom call, you know, I should be recognizable. So I think that that is one of the things that I changed my picture. Plus also my, my older picture was there for almost, you know, I usually change like after every three months, I would say maybe three to four months. It's just that, you know, you need to, it gives fresh energy to, to your profile. Yeah, because don't think you know, that a potential you know, employer is not going to check know you out. <laughs> you know, but you like, know what the surprising thing is that the surprising thing is that when the moment you change your picture and then when you make a post, people think this is another Sohebasan. So he's he's not the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it takes but, time for people to, to get along with the new picture. Uh, the day you shave, that's going to happen for sure. You know, you will lose engagement. <laughs> 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 That's true. So I'll be make sure when you say, don't put a new profile picture. Like let, let let it grow a little bit at least. Because if you look like me, you know they will think we switched account, man. You know, I took your account as well. 
like, is that Shanae? Shanae Hassan? I don't know what that, who is that? <laughs> oh, so have a son. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you want to go into, hey, into, uh, into, into you, you want to go yeah. into your headline section real quick then? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, the slide was just shown. So my last point, my, no, there's two more points regarding LinkedIn is your headline. So your headline, guys, is your unique selling proposition. You know, it's like you have 126 characters, spaces included to write how you stand out and the magic formula I will put in front of you now is just fantastic. The magic formula for me, for the beginner, the, the one who doesn't know how to do it, I help my target audience do something, gain a competitive advantage, which can be like uh, reduce, increase profitability, reduce or optimize uh, no, IT, its IT department or what, whatsoever, but I help my target audience do this or that, you know. So you must really do this because when you will start commenting on posts, people will see your picture and your headline, you know. And your headline, it must stand out. If my headline starts with, I help C-level executives get hired, it's not for any reason because every time I will comment somewhere, I know that all the C-level executives will see that and they will contact me as well. So you can have the same approach. Uh, uh, with a with a job search, you know, uh, you just put. I help your target audience gain something. You know, that's very important. Your headline is super important. So you have a few examples in front of you. If you can, maybe uh, press Matt. Uh, we move to the next one. It's on uh, in your finance, summary, very quick. Finance director. So have you any comment on that? Yeah, it says finance, e marketing, HR. If you want to go into that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there are, there are a few examples. You can just take them here. You know. Uh, I help retail companies find and grow the right talent, open to opportunities, you know. I mean, you can just... The, the secret formula is I help my target audience do something. And your headline, please don't put finance director or e-marketing expert or HR director, no. You need to work on it and make it more appealing. It's very important, yeah. I don't want to talk too much about the LinkedIn content. Uh, maybe, Matt, you can switch to... Uh, the summary we're gonna sweep, we're gonna skip because or else it's gonna take too long. Yes, yeah, so I have for you guys a link. Yeah, it's up. You can just skip. Uh, I have for you guys a LinkedIn uh, profile checklist that covers all the points uh, for you to get your LinkedIn profile on point. So I don't want to, as I said, Matt, I don't want to uh, talk about the summary of, because it's gonna take too long. I'm just realizing it. Uh, I will just send you the, this LinkedIn checklist. You can uh, you can go and get it. Sure, we'll make this available to folks after the after the um, show's over. I will uh, put it in comments now. The checklist is there. All right, so yep. if you go there, I just I just put it in comment. That checklist you just is go up. there and you will get the checklist. Yeah, that's your Bitly link to LinkedIn check is the uh, is the uh, URL that's up right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, an extremely comprehensive LinkedIn profile checklist that says, oh, or you get this right, or you get it wrong. Just be very exigent with yourself. And then at the end, you calculate how many points you have accumulated, and you know how good is your LinkedIn profile. Mm, that's good. Straightforward. Yeah. Do you want to so, yeah. go into resumes? Do you want to pause? Yeah. If you think, if, if, just a few words about the resume, because it's true, it's really a big deal. You know, it's, yeah. it's your. You know, when I talk about a high converting resume, as you can see on the slide, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna show very soon. Um, a high converting resume, what is it first? A high converting resume is a resume that will give you a maximum conversion. So you will never be able to please everyone. I don't know if you agree with me, so hi, Roshine, but it, it's just impossible to have a, something that will make everybody satisfied. You know, you're gonna have some people who will not like this resume, but you need to get the highest conversion rate. Right. So, is everybody. I would argue that you should want to make you're going to be happy. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So there are a few samples, a few resume samples that you will see just on the page below. Those are samples you should not copy. Don't use those samples. <laughs> All the visual infographic resumes and, and resumes with, you know, like fancy stuff and like a bit like disorganized, you know, all this. Not. The three samples you will see, do not copy them. You can copy the next one if you want. In fact, I have for you the whole template that you can fill in just with your own content. Huh? Yeah, so yeah. 
um, so the, those three templates you are seeing now, they are showing up now, uh, they, they will not give you results because they are not optimized for applicant tracking systems. They, they are very discriminatory and it's, it's just very important to, to skip them, you know. Um, just a few words about applicant tracking systems. Companies that they've started to automate their recruitment process since long time, since years and years and years. And now, when you apply to a job board, to a company website, it's not a human. Most of the time, it's going to receive your resume first. It, all the information will be extracted, filtered out, and uploaded into the database. And then, once the HR department is looking for someone with your kind of profile, they will key a few keywords. So your resume must be optimized for those applicant tracking systems. If it's not, it's, it's gonna it's gonna get you rejected all the time. So this is what an applicant tracking system is. I, I can't explain for too long either, but it's really a big deal. Uh, so Matt, you can show the the, the resume the resume sample, which is the achievement based resume. That's gonna that's what's gonna give you results, guys. Yeah. It's a resume that's is there's no fluff. In, like it's just straight to the point. Yeah. And it shows uh, your, 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 I mean, how you stand out and mostly your achievements. And they must be quantified, those achievements. It's super important. So um, uh, I, I feel a bit, uh, because I'm looking at the LinkedIn Live now. I don't see the, the slides at the same time, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to appear in a few seconds. And just right after, Matt, you can go straight to the, to the resume checklist as well. Uh, so I have for you as well a resume checklist that you can use to test your resume. All right, so I will I will put it here on the in the comment section below, and then I'm done. I will just give you. I have a gift for you guys. I have a present for you. I have for you an absolute like the ultimate resume <laughs> template that's going to give you the best possible results. All you need to do is to put your own content. That's it. So you go, you download it, and even on top of that, you will get a free. Uh, a thank you letter or cover letter. I'm not too sure to have a look at the page. Uh, so just go and download it. You know, it's absolutely free of charge. You get the perfect resume layout and you just fill it with your own information. It's that simple. That's amazing. So uh, it's the last slide, uh, Matt, where people can go and get their resume layout together with a, a, a free thank you letter template as well. Yeah, I've got you that. Can get it. You I've can got that whole thing. Best possible uh, commission right there. I've got that pulled up on on the screen right now, Fabian. I know we're on a delay on the screen, but I've got it pulled up. Uh, you know, the website, so you can. There's a pop up. You can close the pop up, and so people will see. Yep, I did. You, you guys join. Don't worry because it's gonna help you a lot. I know it's gonna take out all the guesswork on how what format should I use and what category should I put. Remember, we've had more than four thousand people, so this is what works today. That's it. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a powerful, powerful gift for folks to be able to have as well. Thank you for doing that, Fabian. Can you minimize the delay for the for the live? I wish I could. Are you able to do that? I I wish I could. I can't do it. There's another way right, right now. Right. It it's just is what it so is. What Sorry. Ten, ten seconds. Or yeah, it's about a, a about a ten to fifteen second delay. It's right. built it's built into the algorithm of this thing, and I apologize, but there's no way around it today. <laughs> But, no, me too. It is what it is. It is what it is. We're moving on. It's okay. But we still, everybody's still getting the information, which is fantastic. So there's there's a few things that have been, well, I mean, good grief. We've talked about a lot of different things that have all been very helpful. But in the midst of all that, uh, with what, what Fabian said, Soham, and, and for sure, Shanae, the three of you, is there anything that other people have said on this thing? You know, you've heard that uh, each other say that you'd like to comment on or, or dig into a little bit more for folks as we're kind of moving towards the end. I know we've taken the... We're really on target for the right time. We were about about twelve or thirteen minutes late when we had our our fun time on the front side, but <laughs> we're finding out where where Shanae's going on vacation to. <laughs> I, I might add something uh, just a minute, and it's something that not really related to what we talked about. Is about the mindset. I really believe that whatever we want to achieve in life, as long as we are convinced that we can do it and we put the effort to get there, you can you can get there. Yeah. Just just my. My own example, you know, I'm involved in a few businesses and it's always the same thing. I always see it. It's the mindset. It's always the mindset. You, you convince yourself that you deserve it. Uh, you can do it. There's a way, you know, there's a solution for everything, for every single problem, you know. 
uh, if you want it and you deserve it, you will get it. There is no other option. So go and get it now. Yeah. Really work for it. You can do it. There's only one way to do it, and that's just to do it. It's absolutely right. Yeah. 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 And I think uh, <clears throat> the last minute from my side would be, you know, when, when you feel hungry and you do whatever you can to feed yourself. So if you are hungry for a job, I can give you, because Matt, actually I had like like list of, you know, those things. Maybe I can do another live uh, because I was planning another live maybe next week. So I, I can, you know, discuss all these things more in detail for all of you. Um, so this thing is like when you are hungry for a job, here's a little tip for you which maybe you have not explored, you can go for affiliate marketing programs, you know, help others. For example, if uh, you know, Sinead is in a business and she is, you know, doing something which you think is in line with your passion, is in line with your interests, you can, you can reach out to somebody over LinkedIn. You say like, hey, but you know what? I can drive the clients to you. For example, Fabian is a, is a great, uh, you know, he has a great service for resume uh, business. And if you, if you think somebody in your network who, who you think, uh, you know, uh, need a resume writer so maybe you can recommend uh fabian to that person and maybe even you can work on a commission basis so the money is out there it's just that fabian rightly said that when you think positive you know it's all about your mindset when you when you're hungry for something you'll see options out there to feed yourself and and i, th I think i just just i would just stop here because uh, i can go on and on on and on with, with all those things but i think you know, Affiliate marketing thing, something is uh, out there and maybe I think you can grab more opportunities there and that will help you as well to stay um, in line with your passion. You're going to use your network, you're going to use your skills, you're going to use your communication skills, you're going to use all that online presence, but you will stay in contact with your network as well. So I think it's a great opportunity and then also you can mention it on your resume that I worked during this crisis time. You know, I helped this company, you know, I shoot their profit from X to Y. So... Okay. And it's just that how we have to think uh, about different solutions, how we have to create opportunities for our own self. Opportunities are always there. They are on the service. It's just that we have to unfold them. Well, absolutely. And when it comes down to affiliate, some folks may think, uh, for those that know about JV Zoo or Warrior or different places like that, that it's not necessarily selling somebody's ebook or, or software or something like that, because uh, that's part of affiliate marketing too. But it is the fact, like just what you said, it could be somebody like Shanae or Fabian, so we have myself, that we do things and we offer people the chance of getting a 10%, 15% commission, whatever, on, on something that we yeah. offer that, that's in your wheelhouse. Let's face it, there's folks that are doing resume work on, on LinkedIn. There's a, a lot of people that do resume work on LinkedIn, but they may not be to the level where Fabian's at with what he does with resume work. So, mm -hmm. so why not align with somebody like that? It's I guess some competition, but why can't you partner in that sense? Because you're you know, you're not there, but you could be there by joining forces with him. And now you're on the same platform, you're on the same level as Fabian now. Absolutely, and you know what, Fabian actually is looking for resume writers. So if you are in content writing, yeah. experience in you know uh, resume writing, the job is out there for you, and it's a normal job, you know. So yeah. so reach out to Fabian, maybe Fabian. Yeah. Can Send me a resume on LinkedIn and make sure it's up to date. Huh? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and I would just I would just add one thing to what everybody is saying. It is the mindset. And one thing that we have a growth kind of mastermind down here, and what I tell them is even if you lost all your clients or you lost your job, mm -hmm. you know, one thing that you could always do is see who you know and who who you know, could, how they could service other people. So if you know 25 people, if you know a resume writer, you could connect them with, with Fabi. And if you know somebody that's looking for HR help, you could connect them with Soha, Sohab. And, and if you know, any, you know what I mean? You have to connect people with each other, even if you have nothing that's providing value to both people, and then they're going to be more likely to help you in the future, both of them. So if you have nothing connect people with each other in a way that will benefit both parties. And if you continue to do that, you'll eventually attract an opportunity. Trust me. But oh, yeah. it's like everyone here is saying, you can't just like sit down and do nothing and wait for things to change. You have to change internally. And, you know, your internal mindset really determines how your life goes. Well, and don't, yeah. it don't operate in fear because just because you're trying to promote somebody, you know, some people think, well, if I promote, if I promote Sinead, Everybody's going to give her money. They don't care about me. That's not necessarily true. It's it's when you let go of the fear of 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 having it for yourself and like I'm the only one that can do this thing. Um, it actually exposes you to a larger mass of people that you would have had that you didn't have, 
and opportunities that you won't have if you if you don't let go of some of that fear of thinking that they're better than me. I mean, my job is to actually find people that I could replace myself with. I want to make sure that if I'm a coach, consultant, speaker, all those things, I want to teach people to do exactly what I do and and surpass me. I'm not afraid if they do. That means I've done my job and then maybe I move on to something else down the road, right? So it should be no fear. It's an opportunity is what it really comes down to. That's right. Yeah. Anybody else have something else to say while we're still here? I mean, we've we've got a lot. And by the way, I just want to celebrate that we do have the slides available. So uh, I'll make I'll put that together in a little package. If you are interested in the slides from today's show, um, this is less it's okay with Fabian and so have I thought it would be all right. Right? Is that we're going to yeah, give? Them, yeah, we'll give those away because there's a lot of information there. And should you want to disseminate some of that, you can always message them and ask questions. And yeah, I mean for sure. So have I think that we could probably do another show. Just on the third slide you had there is a lot of information. Um, you're always full of information, which is amazing. But uh, I, I think we go there. Right, from... Yeah, and then maybe right now I think you can focus on your transferable skills. You know, so help the employer know that you know your skills are transferable, not that you know you have worked in an industry, you worked in a role for years and years that your skills are not trans transferable. So I think also um, it's a great deal right now that how you can showcase your skills on a resume. Uh, to help the employer know the fact that you, your skills are transferable. So maybe you can reach out to Fabian. Um, and then also one more point maybe I can make here just really quick is that, uh, you know, read on internet different career blogs because in different career blogs, you would see like like how, you know, uh, the job market is changing right now in this moment of time with COVID-19 and what you need to do, what employees they're looking for, how they're searching for candidates, what kind of keywords they're using and how you can best optimize on your profiles and, um, you know, there are, I think, four keywords. Fabian, I think uh, you want to mention those keywords for the LinkedIn profile. Did you mention already the, the one we discussed earlier? I didn't, I didn't mention them yet. No, okay, so maybe, maybe you can improve your LinkedIn profile with those new keywords. So you can add virtual work, remote work, work from home, and freelancing. So maybe employer, they might be looking for HR managers who can do freelance. Maybe they're looking for a graphic designer who can do a remote work for them. So it's a good, good opportunity for you to beat the applicant tracking system, beat the that, that keywording thing, that search engine, so that at least your profile can come up in the search filters. So I mentioned but, it again. Please. I love this one. I told you last time when you talked about it, I love this one. And I will complete, I will complete it. The okay. same keywords, you can put them in your resume as well. But if you don't, because they don't look good, they don't look good in a resume. I mean, you know, if you are a CFO, you don't want maybe to write uh, remote work. You just put them in white letters. So well, if they print it, they will not see it. But your resume will still show up in the applicant tracking systems for those keywords. You know, so you just write them in white letters. Oh, it's kind of like like a meta tag on a on a website, basically. What you're saying, like it doesn't show up on the website, but it's there, and Google can find it. So you're saying yeah. by the white letters on the resume, it still shows up on this on the system you're talking about. Yeah. That's an option. It works. It really works for that. That's really cool. That's a great tip. I would never have known to done that. I haven't done a resume in like 25 years, but that's another story. <laughs> 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 I, so I do have uh, another thought process here. One other thing uh, we were talking about with fear and, and transition. Um, so have you had a great illustration about a uh, an airline stewardess, right? So let's say that you were an airline stewardess in the midst of yeah. all this guys, right? Do you remember what we were talking about? Yeah, okay. I can remember. So, yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of people, millions of people across the globe, they have lost their job. And in the aviation sector, that is badly impacted. Um, and, you know, right now, maybe the air hostesses, they might be thinking how we can how we can find a job because there are no flights. But if you go back, if you think, you know, you have those very special skills, which others they don't have or they might have as well. But, you know, how you can get back, you can reach out to the healthcare sector, for example. You can say, you know what, I've been working with this airline industry. I have great communication skills. I can be a good fit for your customer services because in healthcare sector right now, they might be receiving tons and tons of calls every single day. You know what? So you can reach out to them. So you have to work only in the um, aviation industry as a flight attendant, as a crew member, but now you can reach out to those sectors. I mentioned again, healthcare sector, IT, education, maybe the education sector, you know, you can, you can be a communication expert. You can take those business courses. You can affiliate, uh, you know, get yourself affiliated with one academy online or, you know, that those, those, uh, maybe start with a small college. Don't target, you know, those big high companies. Maybe you want to start yourself at some point. 
So maybe you know, reach out to those small colleges and say, you know, I have great communication skills. I have international exposure. Maybe you can also be um, a tutor for you know those people who um, I forgot the name of that course, like like international culture, something like this, where you can you know bring together your experience from different parts of the world, how people behave, what are the norms in different parts of the world, because no other person has better experience than you as a flight attendant, because you, you travel almost every single day in a different part, you're tomorrow in a different continent, today you are in a different continent. So you can bring it together, I think opportunities are there for you as well. So if you're a flight attendant, you can reach out to companies that you can work for them in their um, customer services department, and also you can work for them as a, as a front end where, where, you know, where, where you're dealing with the people. So any role that involves uh, dealing with the people, I think you could be a very, very good fit out there. Well, some of this really comes to what you just said, which I love it. I think Fabian's like going, I want to say something right now. I can see it on Facebook. So some of this, no, I, would, I think that I'm would good. be like to, to have a list. It's so easy to do this because we get so used to what we're doing that it's becomes, it comes an unconscious competence, right? So it's like breathing. You don't think like breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, right? Maybe some people, but not everybody else, right? So it's unconscious competence. <laughs> so that's an all-known <laughs> joke system. So if you have this unconscious competence, how can you make it a conscious competence? And that's by sitting down and writing down some of the skills, talents, and abilities that you do have. Maybe yeah. don't just start write down. I want to be a, a I want to be a, you know, a customer service agent. Don't don't think like that. Write down your skills, talents, and abilities that you do have. Write over some of the things you've been doing for the past. I've been a school teacher for 25 years. Okay, what are some of the things you've done for the past 25 years? Planning, um, organizational skills, uh, marketing, <laughs> design. I mean, there's so many things you have that you've been doing. If you start working on those things and create a list, it gives you an opportunity to look at some places that you may never have thought you were able to work in that you may be able to do. It puts you in different positions. Shanae, you have anything you want to say about that? Absolutely. I mean, listen, just like there's millions of waitresses and like people in the hospitality industry that are laid off right now or fired. And as an employer, also, it's important on that end to realize that these people are good with people. They have people skills. They have real life experience dealing with conflict. Like if somebody's, you know, meal is incorrect. So just it's about auditing your strengths and your weaknesses. And if you don't know what they are, give feedback from somebody that's going to honestly tell you, oh, you're really good. You're a really good communicator or, or you're a bad communicator. Get feedback from like five people that you trust and then write an audit. You have to audit yourself and, and see where your skills apply. Don't limit your skill set to function within a job title that you had for 20 years. I mean, times are changing. You can switch industries, you can switch titles, you can switch everything with the same skills. Totally. I think a lot of times people get trapped. Some of my coaching stuff I love to do, but a lot of folks get trapped into those things as identity, which is not at all what that is. They're just, they're things you do in titles, which has zero to do with identity. So a lot of times folks get lost and they think that's their identity and it's not. So by, by doing some of the things we're talking about right now, it actually opens yourself to say, holy crap, I didn't realize that this is really who I am because I am not just this thing. I am this, you know, and, and it opens up a lot of opportunities. Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Well, that's it for me. I'm just, I just wanted to thank you guys because it was really fantastic to be with you today. Uh, look, Shanae, really nice to meet you today. So, uh, it's been uh, it's been years I was talking to So, when I know when I knew him, he has less followers. He had less followers than me. He kind of, he kind of beat, he uh, kind of beat all of us here. <laughs> yeah, and Matt, look, thank you so much for organizing this. It was really a pleasure. Really, I'm just looking forward to catching up with you individually or, or on a live or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, it's a bit late for me in Singapore. Unfortunately, it's twelve thirty. My wife. She's just waiting for me next door. We are, we, are, we are waiting for a baby soon, so she's a bit tired. I can't stay for too long, but I yeah. would love to. It's been a fantastic um, show, and I appreciate everybody being here. And hopefully, it looks like in the, in the comment section, there's a, a bunch of comments. And it looks like people like your beard, so, have, so you're okay there. I think that looks good. And uh, <laughs> we had some, uh, I know Rowena Kabir has been making some fantastic comments in the comment section as well. I think some of that would be... Fantastic. I think if you look at that... Um, Probably so have if you look at Ruina's comments. There are a lot more of those comments that are directed towards 
your niche and your thought process that she made that might be good to follow up with. So we'll do our best to come back after the live and, and kind of scroll through the comments and, and do some answering. It's kind of hard to do while we're live at the same time. Unless you're Shanae, she's been making, she's like Superwoman. She's been making comments and talking and everything at the same time. She's used to this kind of stuff. She got, you got your Superwoman cape on too. It's like, -doo, doo -doo. <laughs> you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the invite, Matt. And yeah, I have to go as well for another meeting at 1230. Yep. But, um, it was a pleasure and yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, it'd be great. Thank you all so much for being here. And, uh, Folks, thanks again for being here at another Matt Chat Live, our world premiere with the three most awesome people in the world here today. I love you guys. I'm glad you were here, and a lot of folks did too. So thanks again. And by the way, folks, again, we'll make all the all the slides available to you. If you need to reach out to Fabian, so have or Shanae, you can always DM them here at LinkedIn, and uh, they will do their best to get back to you. Obviously, the messages are, are a mile long sometimes here on LinkedIn for a lot of us, but uh, we'll do our best to get back to them as fast as we can. Thanks again, guys. I appreciate y'all being here so, so much. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye. All right, gang. So there you go. It was a great opportunity to be together today. I'll just pull this up a little bit more. And we've been on a long time, so uh, I'll go ahead and shut off here. But uh, whoop, whoop. There we go. Uh, thanks again so much for being here on another episode of Matt Chat Live. This was a special episode with some really fantastic people. And I believe that you had a really great opportunity to, to dig into some things there. I'm checking out my screen here, making sure. Don't forget, Fabian made available a, a fantastic offer for everyone here to be able to put through some of your stuff here on LinkedIn, your profile, your resume, and put it through a system that he's developed. I'm about to lose my phone. <laughs> that he's developed for you to be able to check out some of the things that are important for you to, to notice or have. Uh, golly, so professional, right? So... It's so horrible. My little mount is broke. Anyway, it's been fantastic, folks. And I know we've been out here for a long time. It looks like we've been here for an hour and a half. First 15 minutes were mostly a bunch of chatter because I had a big issue with the, with the platform that I use and getting people on at the same time. It didn't work the way I wanted it, but I was able to come up with a plan B really fast, and we made it happen. So I hope it was enough for you to catch and enough for you to enjoy. I hope you heard and saw everything that was important. Make sure you go back to do the replay because there's a lot of information that was disseminated, especially uh, our friend Sohab who had a lot of information to give to you, which was fantastic. So you want to make sure you go back through that and take your time, take some notes, and we'll make those notes available for you again. So one more time, thank you so much for being here today. Don't forget that there is opportunity out there that's just waiting for you. It's waiting for you to say yes. It's one of the things we talked about today. Don't move in fear, but move in confidence because you are so worth it. And there are so many things about you that make a difference and can make a difference in the world. And I just want to encourage you to just dig into those things in your life. If you want to have some help doing that and you don't know necessarily how to get from those points and you're like, I'm kind of stuck and in a position, I mean, no problem. We, we can help you out here. I'd be more than happy to help you with some of those things. It's what I do in my coaching program. And uh, if I can help you um, offline, I'd be more than happy to. I've got some things that I, I make available for folks. Uh, even if you're not in my coaching program, it doesn't matter. I'd like to help you the best I possibly can. So thanks again so much for being here today. It has been an absolute honor and a joy and a fantastic opportunity to share some great, great people with you. Uh, Shanae, so have and, and Fabian, I thank you so very much for your time. And uh, God bless you all. By the way, folks, you know, I am headed to the hospital tomorrow and um, I will have pre-op and then I will be having brain surgery on Thursday. So uh, just asking for all of you that uh, that believe in prayer, that you would just pray for, for, you know, God's hands to move through those surgeons and for them to get all this junk and this mass off my brain so I can get back to business. I'll probably be laying low for a little bit, but I will have some help and I will have some folks that will be making some posts for me while I am recovering. Should be a couple of weeks, they say. My last recovery period was about two to three months. This time they say a different procedure that they've come up with uh, since then will be uh, dramatically different, and I should be back to business so maybe two weeks or less. We'll find out. In the meantime, I'll be doing my best to stay in contact with you, uh, but I will take time to rest. All right, so appreciate your prayers. Appreciate your, uh, your thoughts during the time that I'll be out. Um, I'll make another couple of posts before I uh, head to the hospital, and then that'll be it for a little while. All right. Thanks again so much, everybody. I do love you. I do appreciate you. That's one of the reasons why I want to do this show today. It's all about you, and I want to make sure that you had definitely some information during a time like this that can make a difference in your life. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you again soon. Welcome to another episode of Matt Chat Live.